Hi, this is Rick. As part of the current mission, the Dogs of War Part 2, one of the submissions is to investigate what happened to the chemical and biological weapons special forces that were sent into the area and if we find chemical weapons to blow them up basically. So after clearing the area, we come across the CB, CBPS, which is a chemical biological protection system. And it's a deployable unit that's in the RHS mod. I'm going to set the mission up now and then we can, and then I'll show you how it was done. So I'm going to trigger this, this task with a public variable task 2 done. So this is task 3 A and B that's going to happen. I decided to make it night time. I'm running a trigger just to clear off all the enemies so that I didn't have to get into a gunfight while demonstrating the process. So the first task, clear, cleansing, which is basically clear the area of bad guys. Second task, search, investigate the area and destroy any chemical weapons that you find with explosives. We lost contact with our previous team, sent into the area some months back. There's an equipment crate containing biological protective gear nearby. Put on the gear and examine the area and, explo uh, and use explosives to destroy the toxic containers. Alright, so I'm not going to go into the toxic area directly. Luckily it's in a dip, so the fumes don't get reached quite as far as I am at the moment. So this is a couple of my team. Clearly, whoever was sent in here previously didn't make it. And this is the CBPS. It's a deployable unit, so and it gives you a little bit of information about the the vehicle if you jump into it. So I have three different uniforms I can put on, biological protection suits. This is from an incredibly good mod. And I can load the original, uh, I can load my original loadout once I have completed the mission. It's an extremely good mod, this. I'll give you a link to the mod just now. I'll show you how the sound effect is made for the breathing. Now, if I don't have my equipment on and I go into this area, I'll die. I won't die immediately, I'll get about a 10% damage hit on me every second. So I'll have about 10 seconds to get out of here. Okay, this looks like the likely source of the contamination. I need to destroy them.
switch off. Yes, I destroyed the... And then basically it advances the time to early morning and then the next mission starts. Back to the laptop, load my gear again, and breathing stops. Now I'm going to show you what happens if I take my gear off or if I just run directly into the toxic fume. So use a Geiger counter, it's not really, really suitable, but it simply gives you the indication that you are taking a hit of some kind or there is a threat. Now if I take off my helmet, put it on the floor. You can see I've taken a 10%, 20%, 30% hit. I don't get out quickly. damage is 55% at present. Alright, so that was done as follows. First I create a CBPS vehicle, which is an RHS vehicle as I said. There's a little trigger here, it says when you get into the vehicle, in other words vehicle player equals the this vehicle, which is called CBPS CBPS2, then it just basically creates a little hint and tells you a bit about, it, about the vehicle. Dress up the inside of the CBPS. Create a laptop. Put some add actions on the laptop. The add actions are put on the S10 protective suit, the M04 protective suit, and the M50 protective suit. And then they run when you activate those act, those add actions. It runs these different scripts. And there's a light. Then there's the fourth option, which is basically um, load the original loadout and that just calls on player respawn.sgf and I'll show you what's in there. Toxic laptop attached to, so I attach the lap laptop to the table. I'll attach this guy to the table. So those run little scripts that basically allow you to change your your gear. These guys are dead and they put into different uh, death animations. These barrels are attached to the truck. This is the player that I was using. And this is the chemical spill area. Okay, so the first task was 3A cleansing and there's the and it's assigned and it's an attack. When this task completes, this task, this trigger is called task 3A, 3A done. And what it does is it checks to see with, within the area of 500 by 500, how many within the list, if there are three, less than three, then it will trigger a conclusion. And it'll switch off the smoke on one of the buildings that uh, that I had previously set up. So when this trigger, trigger 3A is done, this trigger will fire because it's looking for the trigger activated state for trigger 3A done. It'll trigger after five seconds and it will trigger the next task which is trigger 3B. The parent task of 3B is 3A meaning this will be a subset and it basically says just if you find the chemical weapons destroy them it's not an assigned task and the icon will be destroy 
and the condition for this trigger for this task to complete will be not alive toxic spill toxic one toxic two toxic three and toxic four so if we go and have a look here here we have toxic one toxic two toxic three and toxic four we have another one called toxic spill which we use for as a central position to place the particle effect on so there's three triggers that cover this 30 meter area if blue force is present it's repeatable this play in this list and a live toxic spill meaning we haven't destroyed the toxic barrels then run this script geiger.sqf geiger.sqf plays the little geiger counter background sound so when you go out of the area the geiger sound will complete the sound is possibly a little too long at the moment so once it's in a loop it takes uh, three or four seconds before it completes so even whilst you're out i suppose it sounds fairly realistic because you would have some residual uh, exposure on your suit and so it will gradually tail off the sound and there's another trigger and that hurts you when you're in the area and you're al and a live toxic spill we haven't destroyed the barrels yet it passes the player to the damage script who basically damages the player and the third script basically kills anything that moves into the area whether it's a rabbit a dog a person um, and not a player so it will kill anything enemies rabbits and so on and this trigger constantly fires because the state is constantly set to false These objects are civilians, well they're independents, but they're dressed as civilians, and they're basically all dead. Alright, so if we look at the scripts, before I go any further, actually, let me tell you about this mod. It's called Chemical Warfare, and uh, it was created by a salt boy. It's an extremely good mod it's available on the steam workshop i'll put the link to it under this video anyway it's brilliant great mod it's comparatively small it's only 73 meg really worthwhile getting let's look at the different scripts okay so the toxic smoke is a particle effect and it uses toxic spill as the object that it attaches to which is one of the barrels. It switches the wind off, it forces it to permanent effect on the server. It basically layers two different particle circles over the top of each other. So you get like a yellow and a bit of a browny greeny color. So that's a toxic smoke. And it's called or run by a simple little script where the object that it's going to be attached to or the center of the circle will be is included and passed to the script now the individual when you go up to the table and you change your uniform it basically runs uh three different scripts this is called promask m04 and it's very simple to generate these kind of scripts if you go into eden editor and you change and you go to an objects and edit loadout and then you export the loadout, dump it into a text file. You will end up with something that resembles this. You can then go and edit out. And in this case, I, I pass the object that's using the add action. So that would be this select one. And that gets put into unit. And then it says hint current loadout saved. So it saves the loadout. into the mission namespace inventory variable and then it sets a variable called loadout saved 
removes all the weapons, gear, backpack, vest, and puts on all of the different uniforms, and adds items to uniforms, maps, radio, compass, blah, 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 sets the face, sets a speaker, sets a variable called protected true, which is used to determine whether or not the person's wearing a uniform, and if not, at how it, how it hurts him. So in this case, you put on the uniform, and it says protected true, and it says if wearing mask, exit with, so it exits the script. If you're not wearing a mask, then it, it runs a script called mask on. Mask on gets the variable from the previous script, from the select zero, and then it says, okay, what is the mask? Puts a local variable in, which is the goggles the unit's wearing. And it says, if the mask is one of these different mask types, then wearing mask equals true. In other words, he's wearing a mask. And it says, while unit and mask equals that, then do the following. Play sound hazmat. And the hazmat sound is this sound. Really nice sound. Um, I can't actually remember where I found it. I know I modified it. I've combined a, it's like a, a non-return valve sound, which is. Really cool sound. Anyway, so it plays that sound, plays sounds local. And it sleeps for 6.5 seconds because that particular sound is 6.5 seconds long. All right, and then it says, once it completes this loop, when this condition is no longer true, then basically wearing mask equals false. Okay, so three different scripts that change your loadout do exactly the same thing with obviously the slight variance in the actual uniform and the uh, mask that you're wearing. Geiger script. The unit was passed to through the script, so it picks it up through this select zero. It checks the toxic distance from the toxic spill. And whilst the toxic distance is less than 30, because in this case we had a, a, a trigger that had a 30 uh, radius. This is play sound Geiger. And the Geiger sound was obviously the sound of a Geiger counter change that to whatever you want sleep nine plus random two and the toxic distance is refreshed on each loop the damage script which checks to see if the player is wearing chemical warfare mask and suit and applies the damage accordingly in this case it says the unit is the select zero the uniform is the uniform he's wearing the mask or the, the goggles that he's wearing and checks and says that protected equals false. So if the if the unit is not a player, then it exits the script. Then toxic distance is the distance between the toxic spill, which is that metal drum, and the unit. And while the toxic distance is less than or equal to 30 and a live unit, and if the uniform happens to be that, then he's protected. Otherwise, he's not protected. Checks the toxic distance again. And then if he's not not protected, then unit set damage, damage unit plus 0.1. In other words, it give him a 10% damage on top of the existing damage. And then send a message to the screen on a local to him specifically, because it's hint is local. Your life signs are dropping by placeholder damage unit picks up the amount of damage he's got. And line break, get to a safe distance and find protective clothing. So it's kind of, kind of hinting that you should go and look for some protective clothing. In case the player hasn't read the instructions and is just like gung ho and running into the runs into the area, if he runs in more than 50% 50, 50 of the way, the probability is he's not going to get out before he gets killed. So he'll learn fairly quickly. And then Toxic distance is checked once again. And so this loop continues 
until every time the unit is in within this the radius of 30 meters and that's how it works so i hope that was of use and i will update this steam workshop uh, mission within the next two or three days so look for version 1.1 of dogs of war part two on the steam workshop thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't cheers for now